So it's really good to be here. Um, I actually studied audiovisual preservation uh, years back, but have since moved into regular old preservation. So it's nice to be back in homeland for a bit. So yeah, I'm an advisor with the uh, preservation advisor with the National Archives of the Netherlands. Uh, we're a team of four actually, and we take care of our preservation policies. Um, I deal in particular with our file format policy. I'm updating that at the moment. Um, yeah, so we do a bunch of things. We do preservation watch, planning and action, um, certification, just a whole uh, range of uh, activities. Oh yeah, this is my first time presenting at a conference, so please be gentle. <laughs> um, so I thought I'd start with an origin story. Oh yeah, by the way, um, it's my pleasure to introduce the <laughs> virtual research environment. Um, so how did this start? Um, in 2019, uh, the Dutch National uh, Digital Heritage Network conducted a survey on digital tools in the Netherlands as part of the project Preservation Tools. The survey was carried out among 27 Dutch heritage organizations uh, that had reported to have a digital repository, which is why they were chosen to participate. The, surface, uh, the survey focused on understanding how those institutions use automation for processing digital collections at the level of pre-ingest and ingest. It did this by looking at the current state of tool usage, but also at possible future needs, the development of workflows, the use of standards, and the influence of the quality of acquired collections on pre-ingest workflows. From the research, it became clear that these heritage organizations face challenges at different levels. Many of them are still developing and implementing their digital preservation systems. Some are ready and willing to improve the systems and workflows they have in place to process bigger and more complex collections faster, but at the moment only a few can implement advanced improvements such as chain automation and quality control. Several institutions recognize the need for pre for pre-ingest in their workflows and report that automating parts of pre-ingest and ingest is relevant to them. That is the case not only for institutions with large and or complex collections, but also for small institutions that do not have the manpower to process even relatively small collections without the help of preservation tools. It is also clear that digital collections are changing both in scope and in the level of complexity. To answer to so, uh, some of those growing needs, uh, which were also reported on an international scale through a survey that was conducted by the Open Preservation Foundation, or OPF for short. Um, so the Dutch Digital Heritage Network commissioned the OPF to create a virtual machine that is easy to install and has the most popular open source tools inside of it in 2020. Is the zoom out now? Did we lose everyone? Yeah, we just lost the, the one who just saw the camera now. This one here. Do we continue? Okay. Okay, sure. Um, let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah, so the, um, the Dutch Digital Heritage Network commissioned the OPF to create a virtual machine that is easy to install and has the most popular open source tools inside of it in 2020. And now in 2022, uh, heritage institutions can actually use the virtual reality reality, <laughs> virtual research environment, that would be cool, to experiment with and test preservation tools without having to discover, install, and configure each of these on their own. And now that the product is, um, has been developed and is in use, operational management will be taken over by the National Archives of the Netherlands, uh, and the OPF will be still taking care of the technical management. So why would you use the virtual research environment? Well, I've already touched on some of those points, but I will um, give an overview here. So to properly add digital objects or collections to a digital archive or repository, um, they'll have to meet certain requirements. Uh, the process of preparing, checking the files is what we do in pre-ingest and ingest phase, uh, which includes checking for viruses, checking the metadata, but also, of course, checking file formats, their versions, and whether we can find and extract additional technical metadata. The process is probably well known to you as uh, steps of validation, identification, metadata extraction. 
To automate those processes, heritage institutions use preservation tools, which help the digital archivist to get insight into the quality and content of digital collections. Based on that, they can decide which actions are needed for long-term preservation. However, there are hundreds of tools to, available to choose from. So for beginning users, how do you choose which one to use? And how do you use them? When you install the VRE, the most popular tool is already for you to use inside the environment. So now even novice users can test and experiment with the tools without having to install each of them separately. Uh, but what is the VRE? Um, so it's easy to install. It's an open source application. Um, what it really is is a pre-configured virtual machine environment with an installed set of digital preservation tools uh, for use directly from your desktop. So your desktop being the hosts and the VRE being the guest. It works in conjunction, conjunction with other open source applications, including or Oracle VirtualBox, which provide basis for cross-platform cross virtualization and makes use of GNOME, which provides a default desktop environment that I will show you in a bit. Um, for more in-depth technical information and everything that's behind the tool and guides for installing and using the VRE, uh, both the open Preserve GitHub and the Dutch Digital Heritage Network websites have um, detailed guides, which I will provide links to later. So what tools are included in the VRE? Um, first off, we have Droid, which is a very well-known file format identification tool, uh, which has been developed and maintained by the National Archives of the UK. Um, it performs automated batch identification of file formats, um, and it uses uh, internal signatures to identify and report the specific format versions of digital files. Those signatures are stored in an XML signature file generated from information recorded in the PRONOM technical register. Next we have JOF, um, which is a tool that can be used for uh, identification, but also for validation and character characterization of formats. Uh, also included is Apache Tika, if I pronounce that correctly, uh, which is a characterization and text extraction tool uh, developed and maintained by the Apache Software Foundation. It can detect and extract metadata and text from over a thousand different file types. Uh, your PDF is included um, to validate and capturize your PFA objects. Handbrake is installed, um, converting videos from nearly any format to a selection of modern, widely supported codecs. Video info, oh, video info is pregnant as a present, um, which is a display of relevant um, technical and tech data for video and audio files, probably of use to this community. Uh, and Inkscape and GIMP are also included because both are open source image manipulation software that are bundled as a part of the, the Debian Plus homepage. Um, also of interest to the audiovisual preservation community probably is that they are currently working on including media conch uh, in the tool set, uh, which has a variety of useful functions for, for this community. But um, new tools can be added, so you can um, add things on GitHub either in questions or in, um, in a request, so definitely don't um, hesitate to do that. So yeah, my, uh, my lovely colleagues have actually um, recorded a video the whole video is eight minutes long, uh, so I won't show you that. But I will show you um, the demo so you can see what the environment looks like and how just some simple examples of how it can be used. Hoe werkt de VRE nu in de praktijk? Dat laten we je zien aan de hand van een paar voorbeelden. De bestanden van deze voorbeelden vind je ook via de link. Ik begin met het programma Droid. In Droid voeg ik de bestanden toe die ik wil gaan analyseren. In dit geval identificeren, want Droid is speciaal bedoeld voor het identificeren van bestandsformaten. Kies de map met bestanden en laat Droid die inlezen via de knop Add. Als deze bestanden zijn ingelezen, druk je op de knop Start en Droid gaat ze analyseren en proberen te identificeren. In Droid kun je vervolgens in de tabel zien dat hij allerlei informatie over het bestandsformaat van deze bestanden heeft gevonden. Meer uitleg hierover 
vind je in de handleiding van Droid. Een tweede voorbeeld is de tool Jove, de JSTOR Harvard Object Validation Environment. Aan de naam hoor je al dat het een validatietool is. Droid voor identificatie, Jove voor validatie. Oftewel zijn ze correct opgeslagen. Start de tool. Als je al weet wat voor bestandsformaat een bestand heeft, kies in Jove dan de bijbehorende module. Vervolgens kies ik via File, Open, het bestand dat ik wil valideren of ik sleep het bestand op de grafische gebruikersinterface. Jove laat je nu zien of het bestand valide is of dat er foutmeldingen zijn. Hierover vind je meer uitleg op de website van Jove. Dit waren natuurlijk twee eenvoudige voorbeelden, maar voor de digitale archivaris zijn deze tools echt onmisbaar. Ga er vooral zelf mee aan de slag. En heb je nog vragen? Neem dan contact op met het netwerk Digitaal Erfgoed. Dank u, Remco. Waar is de presentatie? Let's see. Um, so yeah, if you don't want audio visual guidance, this video also explains you how, all how to actually install it. But if you want text-based um, <laughs> instructions, you can find a Dutch one at the top link and an English one on the GitHub. Um, they have user manuals, but also um, installation guides. So that concludes my um, talk. Um, we are very open to feedback and suggestions and questions. Um, now that the product is finished, we actually want to do a rebranding and a renaming. So if anyone has any original catchy ideas for a title, um, <laughs> that would be great. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> we have some time for questions. Is there anyone with a question for Mary? I think it was very clear. <laughs> You can see the whole video and just put the subtitles in English if you need them. So, thank you so much. Okay.